This video provides a demonstration of the proper procedure for attaching a lead-free EGAN FET die to a printed circuit board. This video is showing a single die being placed. If two die are being placed side by side, the same procedure can be used, but a larger diameter hot air nozzle centered over both die must be used. This video will present the necessary ESD precautions that must be taken through the process, the workstation and supplies needed, the correct method for cleaning the board in preparation, placing the die, and curing the flux, visual inspection criteria, and the testing of the board to verify that the die has been attached successfully. It is important that the proper ESD measures be taken and that the proper workstation and supplies are set up prior to the start of the die attach procedure. The heat plate and hot air gun must be properly grounded an anti-static work mat must be used, and wrist straps and an anti-static coat must be worn at all times. Test equipment to check the success of the die attach. A method for preheating the underside of the PCB must be available. A hot air gun will be used for heating the top side of the EGAN FET so that the die can be safely soldered into place. Anti-static tweezers are used to handle the die. Isopropyl alcohol and lint-free wipes are needed for cleaning the board prior to die attach. A micro spatula is used to apply the tacky flux. Now we are ready to begin the die attach. Remember, it is critical that ESD precautions be used throughout the entire process. Place the board on the heating plate. Clean the pad area with isopropyl alcohol and wipe with a lint-free wipe. Allow the board to dry and do not touch the pad area with bare hands after cleaning. Align the hot air gun over the center of the die pad area. Be careful not to touch the work areas of the PCB. Place the temperature sensor of the heat plate on the board. Turn on the heat plate. Set the temperature to 150 degrees Celsius and begin heating the board. Next, turn on the hot air gun and set it to 150 degrees Celsius and near minimum airflow to prevent the die from being blown away. When the heat plate reaches 150 degrees Celsius, use the micro spatula to apply a small amount of flux, enough to cover the pads where the die is to be placed. Check the orientation of the die to ensure correct connections will be made. Continue to use ESD precautions throughout the process. Under a microscope, use the anti-static tweezers to carefully place the die onto the die pads. Pay careful attention that the die is correctly aligned, lying flat, and correctly located. Swing the microscope away when done. Lower the hot air gun into place so that it is one sixteenth of an inch above the surface of the die. It is important to center the hot air gun over the die to prevent the die from moving during the soldering process. Set the temperature of the hot air gun to 200 degrees Celsius and maintain minimum airflow for the next 45 seconds. Check the alignment of the die for shifting throughout this operation. Raise the temperature of the hot air gun to 240 degrees Celsius and when it reaches temperature, hold for the next 30 seconds. Again. Check the alignment of the die for shifting throughout this operation. Now increase the temperature of the hot air gun to 260 degrees Celsius and after it reaches this temperature, hold the temperature for a minimum of 12 seconds and a maximum of 15 seconds. Check the alignment of the die for shifting throughout this operation. Following the 12 seconds at 260 degrees Celsius, raise the hot air gun slowly and then remove it from the fixture. Always point the hot air gun away from the board. The hot air gun can be returned to its own holder away from the PCB at this time. Turn off the hot air gun. Note turning the gun off will cause the airflow to increase to its maximum airflow. Be careful not to dislodge the die with this airflow by ensuring that the hot air gun is pointing away from the board. Leave the board on the heat plate at 150 degrees Celsius and let the flux cure for at least 30 minutes. After the flux is cured, turn off the heat plate and allow the board to cool to room temperature, which will take approximately 15 minutes. 
Once the board has cooled, remove it from the heat plate. It is now ready for visual inspection. Maintaining ESD precautions, inspect the board for the following. Flux around dye should not be tacky. This can be done using a clean micro spatula. Dye should be resting flat. Dye should be properly aligned and not shifted off the pads. Remove solder balls, if present, around the dye and Gaps between dye and pads indicate unacceptable dye placement. If a dye has been attached to a bare board, it can be tested for shorts as follows. Locate the nodes connected to the gate, drain, and source of the dye. Using a digital multimeter, measure the drain to source resistance with the red, positive, lead on the drain and the black, negative, lead on the source. Look for high resistance greater than 1 mega ohm. If the resistance is less than 1 ohm, it indicates either a bad die or a solder short under the die. Now, with a digital multimeter, measure the gate to source resistance, placing the red, positive lead on the gate and the black, negative lead on the source. Look for high resistance greater than 100 kilo ohm. If the resistance is less than 1 ohm, it indicates either a bad die or a solder short under the die. For a fully populated board, as in the case of a repaired board, it is possible to look for shorts as well as test for basic FET functions. These additional tests are accomplished by operating the board normally while evaluating with an oscilloscope. Locate the nodes connected to the gate, drain, and source of the die. Connect the oscilloscope to the gate source and verify the gate signal. Once a gate signal has been verified, connect the probe to the drain source and verify that the FET responds to the gate signal. Main power may need to be applied to the board. If so, keep this voltage below 5 volts. It is highly recommended to verify the gate driver circuit prior to attaching the die to prevent a possible repeat of the failure. This video presented the necessary ESD precautions that must be taken throughout the process the workstation and necessary supplies, board cleaning, dye attachment, and flux curing, post-attach visual inspection, and test for successful dye placement. For reference, as you undertake the placement of an EGAN dye, please refer to our Quick Reference Procedure Guide and remember to use ESD precautions throughout the process.